Well, what an incredible month July is. It is Youth Month here at Brown Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, you have joined us for Bible study. And if things are looking different, that is because at Brown, you've, they do everything in the month of July, including Bible study. So thank you all for letting me tag along. You know, I'm getting <laughs> old. I, I need to be reaffirmed. And so these young people have been allowing me to uh, hang out and do Bible study with them. How y'all doing? We're good. doing good. Great, great. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm all excited about what we're getting ready to do. So look, go ahead, hit that like button, hit that share button, invite your family and friends, grab those young people, bring them around. Uh, you don't want to miss um, this, another Bible study with our young people here at Brown Missionary Baptist Church. Let's pray. We're going to jump right into it. Father God, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity to study your word. And thank you for these young ladies, Lord. I pray even now that you will open up our hearts and our minds of understanding, give us wisdom, clarity, insight, as well as application. How do we make this practical and live it out day by day? Bless our time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All righty. It is great to see y'all. I haven't seen y'all in over a year. Yes, sir. And uh, no standing on the doors, no standing in the <laughs> aisles. So first thing I want y'all to do is introduce to uh, everybody who y'all are. Okay. My name is Kirsten Harrell, and I'm 16 years old. I'm going to 11th grade, and I go to Middle College High School in Memphis, and I dance with Young Actors Guild. I'm very active in the church. I do many things in the church, wow. and I also play instruments for enjoyment. Really? Yes, now, sir. I did not know that, Kirsten. <laughs> what instruments? I play violin. I've been playing that since I was like fifth grade, and then I picked up guitar on the side and piano. Really? Where is my guitar, y'all? <laughs> oh my goodness, we, we need you. Great. Now, do you sing as well? Because I know all of these years around here, you've been ushering, but do you sing as well? Um, I don't sing. <laughs> no, sir. Okay. All right. I Kirsten. just really dance. That's it. Yeah. You really dance. I know Rick and Karen are very proud of you. <laughs> and Ms. Reagan, introduce yourself. My name is Reagan Crew. I'm 14 years old. I'm going into the ninth grade. Um, I'm on the tennis team, and I'm a junior usher. That is fantastic. So this is all ushers. Is that is that okay? Yes, the ushers sir. got the got the uh, thing today. And and look, Reagan, if y'all ever, um, whenever my skin is looking very glowing, and uh, y'all are like, oh wow, Pastor's skin is so well. It's because of Reagan's mama. I, you know, I use I use your mama stuff. Yes, sir. Yes, and so uh, so I'm all excited. Well, great then. So today. We are actually coming from Judges chapter 4, Judges chapter 4, and the subject is choosing to take risk, choosing to take risk. Uh, just before we jump into Judges chapter 4, have y'all ever taken some risk? Yes, um, sometimes. <laughs> I'm not really a risky type person. Really? Now, Reagan said it real quick, so, so what's, what's been a risk you've taken, well, Reagan? Sometimes, like, if I know I have a test, I'll be like, I could study in the morning, push it off. Like, that's the risk, because I'm ah. like, yeah, I need to pay. Procrastinate and wait till the very mm -hmm. end, and then cram it in. I used to do that a lot. Get, get up 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning trying to, mm -hmm. okay, all right. Mm -hmm. All right, what's, what's been a risk since you're not, any, any risk you've ever taken? Um, not necessarily. Probably just, like, close to what Reagan said. Probably doing my homework that morning. Uh, and before care, trying to get my assignments together. All right, all right. Well, well, we're talking about risk taking, choosing risk. Matter of fact, this whole month, the theme has been champions called to win. Champions called to win. And if we're going to be a champion, if we're going to be winners, sometimes it involves risk. And so, Judges chapter four. Judges chapter four. What does it mean? to take risks. And uh, Judges chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Why don't you read that for me, Kirsten? She sent for Barak, son of Abinadab. No, and Abinad? I should have told you, girl. <laughs> Look, in the Bible, when, when it gives one of those names uh, that it's like, what in the world? How do you pronounce <laughs> it? Just say, just say the first letter and just keep on going, you know. Mm -hmm. She sent for Barak, son of A, from Kadesh and in and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go take with you ten thousands of men of 
and and <laughs> Z and lead them t up to Mount Tabor. I will send Caesarea, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River and give him into your hands. Now, I find it so interesting that we're talking about Deborah. She is the lady, the prophetess. Uh, we're talking about Deborah, and I get a chance to talk to, to you girls because <laughs> uh, Deborah, this prophetess, oh, my, great woman of God, very wise woman. And uh, it, during this time, the people of Israel are being uh, in persecution, and, and um, as they are fighting against Jabin, king of Canaan, God is going to send a word through Deborah to get Barak ready to go to uh, fight. And uh, Barak, Barak, uh, as many people call him as well. And um, so what does it mean then if we're going to take risk? If we're going to take risk. Uh, here's what Deborah told Barak. God has literally called you to go fight this army. I think the very first step in taking risk, choosing to take risk, is stepping up to responsibility, stepping up to responsibility. Uh, every last one of us have a calling on our lives. Do y'all know y'all have a calling on y'all life? <laughs> yes, sir. Do you already know what that calling is? Um, I don't know for sure. Okay. But I think I'm a pretty good tennis player. All right. Um, great, great. Now, you know what? I Look, when y'all make y'all millions, because <laughs> I've, I've seen a soccer star, uh, a music producer, and now a tennis player. Get get it, get out the way, Serena. Uh, and and you know, but we all right. That's a wonderful thing. So okay, tennis playing. Um, I feel like one calling on my life is dance, definitely, and I'm also pretty good in science. So probably being a doctor or something like. I that. hear you, girl. Way way to go. So look, we have a calling on our lives. And it's so important that we step up to the responsibility. Even right now, as teenagers, y'all have a calling to be a good daughter, <laughs> uh, to be a good student in school, to be a good usher. All of those are yet callings that God has put in place on your life. So it's so important, first of all, just to step up to the responsibility. Now, when G Deborah told Barack to do that, uh, he didn't want to step up. Verse 8, what, what did it say, Reagan? Barak said to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. Wow. Have y'all ever been scared? Definitely, yes. <laughs> Have you ever told somebody, hey, come with me. You got to stay with me. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's normal to be fearful. Um, but here it is. Bar Barak is telling Deborah, you have to go with me in order for me to go. I know I mentioned to you, your sister, your big sister, just had a birthday. Yes. Are you the baby in the family? The middle child. The middle child, there's one more yes, under you? Yes, a sir. little? Boy. A little brother, oh wow, my goodness. Well, look, so, um, so as, have you ever been afraid? Yes. <laughs> when you're afraid, what do you normally do? Pray. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad Rodney and Tanzania have taught you to pray. Look, so, so here it is. Uh, he says, unless you go with me, I won't go. So I believe not only must we step up to our responsibilities, but if we're going to really choose to take risk, we have to step out of our comfort zone. We have to step out of our comfort zone. I believe this speaks about courage. Uh, tell me a moment that, that you had to step up and take on some courage, Kirsten. Um, so recently, I have I decided to run for vice president of my class, and I, we had to deliver a speech to everybody. So of course I was nervous because it was—it's not a lot of us, but it is kind of. So I had to give a speech to my whole class, and I was nervous at the moment. But once I got up there and doing, started doing everything, I kind of calmed down, finished the speech, and everybody thought I did good. So. Yeah. Great, great. Now you know I'm going to have to ask, how did the election turn out? Um, I lost by five votes, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. But look, courage. You, it took you courage to step up, to even want to say, you know what, I want to be, was this vice president? Yes, sir. All right. I, I, what about yourself, Reagan? Um, I ran for class president as well. Um, and I, I recently just had an interview for SGA at my school, so ah. 
that took a lot of courage. That's all right. That's all right. Y'all yeah, want a little secret? Your pastor was some, was freshman class president at Christian Brothers my, my freshman year. So I, I, I was actually on SGA and did all of that running and all of that stuff. So I'm glad the Lord delivered me from politics and uh, put me into the pastorate. But, uh, but yeah, so courage, courage. All right, so we got to step up to our responsibilities, our calling. We have to step out of our comfort zone, take on that courage that we need. But then here's the last thing I want to just talk about in terms of just choosing to take risk. Um, we know the story. Deborah is going to go with Barry. But here's what Deborah said in that, and this is interesting. Again, I'm glad that I'm talking this among some ladies. She said, because you refuse to just go immediately, God is going to give the victory, but he's going to give the victory to a woman. And so it was actually a woman who ended up killing the, giant, the general of the army. Ain't that something? Yes. Uh, and, and so, uh, but the last part of the book of Judges, um, those last couple of verses, it says, So on that day God subdued Jabin the king of Canaan before the people of Israel, and the hand of the people of Israel pressed harder and harder against Jabin the king of Canaan until they destroyed Jabin king of Canaan. My last little point there is step up once game. I think it begins to talk about consistency. And how do we then make some changes so that not only can we be a winner one time, but we can start winning consistently. Mm -hmm. Now tell me about that because I can only imagine tennis is hard to do. How do you, how do you build that consistency and step up your game? Okay, so the best way to build up consistency is to first love what you're doing. And... Hmm. Um, you could think of it as like, if you're not working, someone else is always working. So you should use that time to better yourself and your skills. I like that, I like that. Look, passion, passion. You wanna step up your game, you wanna remain consistent, you need passion, you need to love what you're doing. And, uh, and now give me that quote again about if you're not doing your time, somebody else is? Yes, yeah, somebody else is gonna eventually work harder it might, right. They might one day be chewed, so you have to. Put the time in yeah. as well. So, so make sure that, look, uh, you're working your craft, you're doing it consistently, and you're giving it all that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what about, you know, my goodness, because you've got a whole lot of stuff going on yourself, Kirsten, as well. Yes. Uh, I feel one thing should be like confidence, because I know when I dance, you have to have a certain level of confidence in you to know that you're, oh, I'm doing this good, I'm doing this pretty good. Because dance is something extremely hard to master. Yeah. So when you look at other dancers that may be better than you, I always sit back and observe what they're doing to make sure I can do the same thing or do it to a point where I can progress. Now, I don't know how y'all dance because, <laughs> I mean, you know, like, uh, how do you know where your feet is going to land and where to put your feet? Oh my goodness, I was a, uh, there, there was a, uh, Badur Center has a, um, I guess one of their contests is a Dancing with the Stars contest. Yes. And guess who was one of the contestants? Your pastor. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, so I was, I was getting up, <laughs> I was going, and, uh, and my goodness, me and this girl, I mean, she was teaching me to dance, and, and we were going to dance. I'm glad COVID hit y'all for a lot of reasons. Uh, um, it it would have been some sad, uh, a lot of funny faces out there. Uh, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, so, so, so passion, it takes time. Um, giving it all that you have and what you're doing because in life, if you're going to be a champion, you're going to have to take risks. Uh, don't want to take up all the time. I, I think y'all have some questions. So yes. young people handed in some questions? Yes, sir. All right. Would you like to start? Sure. You can I'll start. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so where in the Bible can we read that the devil was kicked out of heaven? Where in the Bible can we read that the devil was kicked out of heaven? So I'm going to show y'all a neat little scripture uh, uh, trick here. So I pulled out my, my uh, safari scripture. 
um, um, I beheld um, Satan uh, cast out of heaven. Um, and that's a bad translation of the scripture. Uh, booyah. Okay. So what did Jesus mean when he said, I saw Satan fall from lightning uh, from heaven? So Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Okay. is one of those um, places that speaks about Satan being kicked out of heaven. And, uh, and then Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. Okay. Thank All right. <laughs> so now y'all know how to Google and yes, get answers, yes. even from the Bible. Um, what's your favorite Bible verse? And I'm curious, like, how does it relate to your life? My favorite Bible verse, and, and I would have to say three, I have three verses that are my favorite, okay? Two of them we read every Sunday. So Philippians 4, verse 13, mm -hmm. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And, um, and then 1 John 4, 4 is greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Guess what? When I was y'all age coming up and younger, that was what my pastor began to teach us at New Hope. So every, every Sunday, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it really gave me that, that word that you just mentioned, confidence. Kirsten, and gave me that confidence. The other one, the other scripture is Colossians chapter 1, verse 28, 29. Him, talking about Jesus Christ, we preach, warning every man, teaching every man with all wisdom, that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy, that he powerfully works within me. So I got to give it all that I have, because I'm trying to make a difference in the lives of men. Those are my three. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Okay. If you had not accepted your calling, how hard do you think your life and the life of those around you would be? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, it, hey, it, it might have gone easier. <laughs> <laughs> the, the hardest job is pastoring and preaching. Now, so my other career path, I loved math in school. And uh, you mentioned science, so I oh, love sure. math. And I went to college to be an engineer. So I was going to be an electrical engineer. I was going to make a lot of money. Math was my favorite subject. But the engineers back in my day was making all the money. So that was what I was going to do, make all the money. I was going to go to Harvard. So, um, hey, the Lord changed all of that. <laughs> okay. So my next question is, how did you know that you were called to be a pastor? Oh, wow. I, I love, thank you, young people, for asking me <laughs> these questions. Uh, when I was nine years of age, I saw this vision of me preaching and uh, not only preaching, but pastoring a church uh, that ministered to the whole person. And it was like the Lord was saying, go preach, go preach, go preach. And I saw a bright light across the whole nine yards. And this is at nine years of age. Uh, I was passionate about reading the Bible, studying the Lord. I love church, love Jesus. And when I saw that at nine, it was like, okay. And everybody was already telling me, because I was already mm -hmm. speaking, doing a highlight, Sunday school highlight. They were already saying, okay, Lord, where's going to be a preacher? But, uh, but three years later is when I announced it and accepted that calling. So, That's good. Yeah. Any others? One, I have one more. What's the best way for people my age to better understand the Bible? The best way for people your age to understand the Bible, I would say, one, get an easy to, trans, easy to read translation. So the New Living Translation that we read most Sundays is a real easy translation. Two, just start reading. Just start reading. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage young people, read a chapter of Proverbs every day. Um, there's a project that I'm working on. Maybe I can finish it in, the, in this month of July of where I want to write a devotional from every chapter in Proverbs and give somebody 31 days to reap some wisdom from Proverbs. So, so easy translation Bible, and then just start reading and read regularly. Okay. I have one last question. All right. Do you give your tithes to the church by helping someone or giving money to the church? And like, what if you're unable to do both? I think people ought to do both. 
So please give your tithe <laughs> to the church. Please give your tithe to the church. Look, we got a lot of things going on, and, and so we need a lot of resources. So, mm -hmm. um, and even one of the things that I would encourage young people to do, start early now, tithe from y'all allowance. You know, if you get $5, what, what, what is the going rate for allowance these days? Uh, I, I don't I have an allowance. Neither do I. But I think a decent allowance is $100 a week. Ah! <laughs> well, you heard it. You heard it right here today with Reagan. Uh, a decent allowance for a young person, $100 a week. Trey might take you up on that because, he, he look, he, he thinks he needs to get a pack every week. And sometimes the packs are... You know, he's like, not the, I want the $99 pack. All right. So, so $100. So, look, if, if you got $100, all right, Rodney, you give her $100 now <laughs> this week. How much are you going to give to the church? Um, 10% yeah. in this island. 10%. <laughs> I'm not good at that. <laughs> $10. Give that $10 from that $100 to the uh, church. And, uh, and I believe that as we do that, God is going to bless us with even more. Yeah. Now, and, and so here's the wonderful thing. When you start tithing like that to the church, I believe God will put you in a position where you can do more even for other people. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I got a couple of questions for you all. Uh, so what's been the hardest thing about COVID-19? Uh, y'all, both of y'all ready to answer that? <laughs> um, I would say not being able to go to school. I was virtual all year. I had the opportunity to go, but I wasn't ready. Okay. So that was the hardest part, and not being able to see my friends. Ah. Uh, for me, I'm an only child, so like staying in the house 24/7 and not being able to talk to people, that was the hardest part. Oh, wow. Because I am a very sociable person when it comes to people I know. And it was just hard not seeing my friends, not talking to anybody, and also not getting out and doing things because I'm always on the streets and running. So I like to do things and venture out. So, so when did y'all start back connecting with your friends? Um, well, FaceTime, that's, that was my best friend <laughs> all year. So I've been talking to them all year pretty much, but I would like to see them in person more. Yeah. Um, I did FaceTime too, but not as often with like my associates, but my school had an option if we can go in, in person or stay virtual and I went in person for a little bit okay. and see, saw some of my friends and I also, I also hung out with friends on the side too. That's pretty neat. So, so, so give me a lesson that y'all have learned from the pandemic. Um, I learned to definitely not take life for granted mm -hmm. because just thinking about the last time I was in school, I was a freshman and now I'm about to be a junior. It's just really crazy to me. And then I just missed out a whole year of my life. And I just really felt like I want to go back to where I was a freshman, finish out that, finish out my actual sophomore year in school and actually hang out with people that whole time. But I felt like I Because I guess I even your freshman it. year was cut short. Yes, sir. Wow, I, I didn't even think about that. Yes, all right, what, what lesson have you learned? I think I, Kirsten really hit all the points <laughs> with that one, but yeah, pretty much my seventh grade year was cut in half, and then my eighth grade year was completely just wow. gone. So. so now you're going to be going back into high school. Yes. <laughs> Last time I was in school, I was in middle school. And, I'm and now you're going to, wow, you're like going right into high school now. <laughs> You, you know, um, so church, how does, you know, how, how was it doing church in the midst of the pandemic? Um, I would really like to be at church, and I did watch online, but I like being in the sanctuary and everything better, so. Have y'all started coming back? My dad has. I came okay. back for a while. It definitely, I oh, on Sunday, so I <laughs> good. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Okay. It definitely wasn't the same because we would just have to wake up just to sit at the table. <laughs> and of course, I like I like to hear your sermons, but it's just better when I'm there. Okay. And uh, your list your lessons that you did, it helped me cope a little bit with it because it felt like every Sunday it was like a pick me up for the rest of the week. Okay. All right. So look, you've heard it from my, my favorite, my favorite <laughs> junior ushers, Kirsten. And Reagan, 
first of all, church is back open <laughs> and you need to come on back to church. So get that vaccination and come on back to church. Uh, be in person. But we're grateful for those that are yet watching us online. Uh, and um, so your parents did make y'all get up and sit at the table. Yes, yes well, right. I, I got up on my own. I just, <laughs> I wanted to be Oh, really? Online, See, she is really trying to get this $100. <laughs> she is really trying to get this $100 uh, a weekly allowance now. Yeah, so, so independent. You're being independent, mature. All righty. Great, great. And, uh, and y'all had to sit at the table? Yeah, my mama fixed breakfast every Sunday. Then uh, we would sit at the table, watch a uh, sermon. Then we would just go back and have a regular day. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Well, look, we are thankful for you joining us once again. Again, it's Youth Month here at Brown. I've had the wonderful privilege all month long of doing these Bible study with the young people. Young people, please go back. Make sure that you uh, like and share. Put these uh, Bible studies out there. Our young people have been writing the devotionals as well. I don't know. Did y'all write any of the devotionals? We did not. Okay. Some <laughs> of the other young folks have been writing the devotionals as well. So a wonderful opportunity for you to subscribe to us. Uh, you can always text um, the number for our devotional. And I'm trying to get the new number out. Uh, Text to the number 27636 um, devotional. So text devotional to 27636. And uh, these young people have some great things uh, in store for us. Uh, thank you for joining us. And again, let's be champions that win. Let's step outside of our comfort zone, take the risk, step up to what God is calling us to do in our life. Uh, let's pray. Father God, Lord, I thank you again for just this month of July. Thank you for these young people. And, I, I, you know, I didn't even think about the fact that one half of the year was cut. They missed a whole nother year. Literally, Lord, the transition that they have had to go through has been tremendous. And yet you're faithful. You're with them every step of the way. And I pray that you will give them extra grace to finish strong, to do all that you have called them to do. May your hand of blessings and favor rest upon their life in a very special way. And as they continue to seek you, give them the desires of their heart. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.